Ladies and gentlemen, Danny Kay. You're sitting alone in your room, but come hear the music play. Life is a cabaret, old chum. Come to the cabaret. Put down the knitting, the book, and the broom. Time for a holiday. Life is a cabaret, old chum. Come to the cabaret. Come taste the wine, come hear the band, come blow the horn, start celebrating right this way, your table's waiting, no use for me, no profit to do, to wipe every smile away, life is a cabaret, oh chum, come to the cabaret. friend from the Bronx, Jerome. Ah, uh, okay, kids. Thanks, thanks for the vote of confidence, kids. Now listen, kids, in just a few minutes, the stage of the Marshallu Park Community Center Theater is going to be graced by a former member of this very group who's gone on and done big things in show business, Mr. George Burns. Oh, yeah. That's fabulous. Listen, kids, kids, as you know, Mr. Burns has kindly consented to give us some pointers, you know, in our coming musical review. Now, remember, his time is precious, so let's not ask him a lot of pointless amateur questions, right? Oh, yes, Sandra? Well, uh, uh, yeah, I would like to ask uh, Mr. Uh, Yes, Mr. Burns. I think it's a pointless question. Oh, no. No. Oh, sorry. Sorry. What's the question? What's the question, Sandra? Should I do it? Yeah, sure. Well, I, I would like to ask, Mr. It's pointless. It's pointless. <laughs> I'll decide if it's pointless, Sandra. He'll decide. Uh, I would like to ask Mr. Burns yeah. if he ever met Cary Grant. <laughs> <laughs> That's a pointless question. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry that no, I. No, it's not. Hey. Oh. to know Cary Grant very well. Oh, do you? Do you really? I do. I must tell you this. What? A beautiful young girl on Hollywood Boulevard mistook me for Cary Grant. Oh, really? Yeah, she, she stopped and then she looked at me and she hollered, Cary Grant, and threw her arms around me and she hugged me and she squeezed me and she kept kissing me. <gasps> what did you do? I kept saying, Judy, 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 Judy. <laughs> <laughs> then she put on her glasses and she looked at me and she says, you're not Cary Grant, you're General Grant. Oh! <laughs> so, so, so I saluted and left. <laughs> sir, hey, let's bring us to that up here, Mr. Burns, please, sir. Sir, on behalf of the Moshe Loop Park community players, I, Arnold Trapton, the director, would like to welcome you. Well, go right ahead. <laughs> welcome. That's it. <laughs> I'm glad you didn't hurt yourself. <laughs> so, uh, so you're going to do a comedy vaudeville review? That's right, Mr. Burns. Well, I've done a lot of them in my time. I remember one summer doing one at Lake Opatcon. 
and they and they're right in the lake. The theater was in the middle of the lake, and if the audience didn't like it, they throw you into the lake. I got so that that I I couldn't sing without water in my mouth. <laughs> Mr. Burns, we have most of the musical numbers set for the review, but we are short on comedy. Our comedy is a cinch. Now, who's your top banana? That's just it. We don't have one. You can't do a review without a funny man. You need somebody that can deliver jokes, somebody who can take pie in the face, somebody who can do funny falls. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, Arnold. I didn't see anybody was standing there. I thought you said you didn't have a top banana. That's not a top banana, Mr. Burns. That's Jerome. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry with I'm a, late. With a nose like that, he's got to be a top banana. <laughs> I, I beg your pardon. My, my name is Jerome I. Taperman. Good, good. With a long nose and a long name, you can't miss. <laughs> you don't understand. And a funny voice. Kid, you've got everything. I beg your pardon because, uh, you know, I'm, I'm the fat man here. Well, I think you're a funny fella. And I think you're the makings of a, of a top banana. Well, it's very sweet and very nice of you, but no, uh, you I'm, I'm, so. I'm the prop man here. And what I was doing, unfortunately, I slipped on a piece of prune Danish. Oh. But, uh, you know, I was supposed to come in here because we're having a very big celebrity come. And I got this for the coffee clutch, because after, you know, we have our little rehearsal and everything, George Burns is coming here. And I, I, I just did a dumb thing, I think. <laughs> I'm George Burns. How, how, how do you do, Mr. Burns? Uh, Mr. Mr. Burns, with all due respect, he's not one of our performers. He's just Jerome. He's, uh, he's just never, a prop man. Nevertheless, that fall he took is as good a comedy fall as I've ever seen. Yeah, but Mr. Burns, I mean, I hasten to implore you that that was a very big accident. Accident you know. or not, it was a funny fall. And I'm going to prove to these people that anybody can be a top banana if you've got the right teacher. Yeah, but, but Arnold, excuse me, Arnold. Well, I, I don't know how to do anything stage-wise. Kate! If Mr. Burns says he can help you, let him help you. I know, but why are you so hostile, Arnold? Hostile? <laughs> For heaven's sakes, don't push me, Arnold. You get out there, I'll smash you with the prune dish. Ar Arnold? <laughs> you get out there, Arnold. Once and for all, Arnold, I don't want you to behave like this in front of the rest of the players. You understand what I mean, Arnold? Uh, Mr. Baines, I'd, um, I'm willing to try, even if I can't tell a joke. Jerome, if you know how, it's the easiest thing in the world. I know how, and in a few minutes, you'll know how. And we'll, we'll take the simplest joke form in the world. I'm going to teach Jerome how to do a knock-knock joke. Knock-knock joke. Ready, Jerome? Uh, ready. Knock, knock. Come in. <laughs> uh, no. Uh, you don't want to come in? What? Later I'll come in. Oh. First we got to get a laugh, then I'll come in. I say what you mean. Yes, let's, let's try it again. And you don't say come in. I don't say that. You say who's there. Now, got it? Right. <laughs> who's there? <laughs> I didn't say knock, knock. Come in. <laughs> Supposing we try another form. And I, the the one-line joke. Now here's a very very easy joke, Jerome. How do you stop an elephant from charging? I didn't know. You take away his credit card. <laughs> That's very funny, Mr. Burns. Thank you. I mean, it's funny because an elephant doesn't even carry a wallet. <laughs> I mean, where, where would an elephant keep a credit card? You know what I mean? He, does, he doesn't even wear pants, an elephant. You know? He can always keep it in his trunk. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's funny, like a valise. You I mean. made up another yeah. joke. That's two jokes about an elephant. Well, there was one, a one about the charging. Yeah. One about the charging, and the other one, the other, and the credit card wouldn't stop a real elephant oh. anyway, because he doesn't even know what a credit card is. I don't think. Because, I mean, if, if an elephant doesn't have a credit card, you know, how, who can he have to vouch? <laughs> Try it, you'll feel better. <laughs> did, you ever, did you ever do any dancing, Jerome? Oh, no. I did not do dancing. What about the jokes you were supposed to do? I'll do, do the jokes. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. 
Mr. Ben, you just said only a few minutes ago I was a regular top banana. I know, but I picked the wrong bunch. <laughs> That's another one. <laughs> I get it like a bunch, bunch of bananas. Oh, you oh, make me laugh. Oh, shut up, Joe. <laughs> Dance, Mr. Benz, I told you. I have been blessed with two left feet. If you don't dance, how will these kids learn? And besides, it's easy. You don't really have to be a good dancer. It's mostly faking. Yeah? Watch me. Way down upon the dee 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 dum dee 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 da do dee da 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 doodle dee 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 ba dee 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 da dee da dee dum bum ba dee doodle dee doodle dee 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 dum bum bum. Now try it. Oh, oh Mr. Benz, I, I really can't dance. I would be embarrassed. I would. <laughs> you! Get me a starving and me, Arnold. Ready, ready. Arnold, a gentleman, a big star like Mr. Benz. I told you, he can help you. I don't know how to dance. 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 Not with me alone. Oh. <laughs> So he gave me a regular push and everything. <laughs> Besides, Arnold, <laughs> I can't dance if I don't have any music, Arnold, because if you. Music. That's good. <laughs> Got a meeting out of your hands? Why don't you tell a joke? Tell, tell a joke while I'm dancing? Why are you dancing? I'm not that coordinated. Well, let's try it. <laughs> All right. Now tell uh, a joke. All right. Uh, Mr. Baines? Yes, sir. Uh, why does the chicken cross the road? To get on the other side. Oh, no. No? No, for foul papers. <laughs> I got another one, too. Go ahead. Yeah. Why, why does a chicken go halfway across the road? I don't know. Why does a chicken go halfway across the road? To lay it on the line. <laughs> That's funny. Hey, hey, you're in show business. I'm a tough banana. You're a tough banana. Oh, yeah. okay. Our next guest is Maria Mathieu, and she's from Paris. And although she's only 18 years old, she's already been acclaimed as the most popular singer in all of France. Now, the, the songs she sings are in French, but the emotion is universal. Let's listen, shall we? Ladies and gentlemen, Maria Mathieu. Fantastic. Isn't, isn't she really marvelous? She has such, she got such a marvelous quality. Luckily for me, she doesn't understand. But she really is. She's absolutely, they say, a ravissant in French. She's really just beautiful. She has such a... Oh. Okay? <laughs> okay. Okay, yes. <laughs> Mireille is uh, from Avenue. And she's the oldest of a family of 13. And, and there's going to be 14 soon. I think her mother's going to have another baby, huh? Okay. Okay. <laughs> now, you know the incredible thing? She is an absolute sensation in Paris, in France, all of France. And she's only been singing professionally for eight months. And she doesn't speak a word of English. The one word she does say, she says extremely well. Okay? Okay. Okay. <laughs> now... 
She's going to sing a beautiful French love song. Love, love song. A love song she's going to sing. That's a Run Run Shaw song. And after she sings it, I will then translate it for you. Tu prêt? OK. <laughs> uh, Paul, je l'ai pas... Non, 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 non! Je l'ai pas en sur les faire tour. Tu peux te voir la scène faire. Et Mireille, je l'ai pas en sur les toits. On peut se les faire en tour. Très bien. Oh, oh, tu parles très bien. OK. <laughs> Dans mon cœur chanté, je vous retrouve à mes côtés. Me suis rentré fort pour danser, guettant la nuit pour m'embrasser, murmurant des folies tout bas, me forçant à rire aux éclats. Me pressant doucement les doigts, comprenant mes secrets et moi, prenant l'air d'un enfant gâté, quand vous voulez tout emporter, et soudain les yeux éperdus, me rendant mon bonheur perdu, tout redevient réalité. En écoutant mon cœur chanter. I will go. <laughs> I'll be all right. Just a minute. It did. It, it. <laughs> She may excuse. <laughs> you, you, <laughs> you sing it now, and then I will translate. Tu comprends? Eh oui. En écoutant mon cœur chanter. Don't wear tin underwear in an electrical storm. <laughs> Je vous retrouve à mes côtés. Make sure your dentist doesn't fill your throat. <laughs> Broken promises do not feed the Admiral's pussy cat. <laughs> If it weren't for Ohio and Illinois, Indiana would cave in. <laughs> Where do I go to get my ears pierced? Me forçant à rire aux éclats. Always dry your feet before kicking a harp. Ou me faisant fermer les yeux. Early to bed and early to rise, and you miss everything. Never let a zebra into a prison dance. Quand je suis loin de vous, soudain je pense à vous et le bonheur m'envahit d'un seul coup. Comprenant mes secrets et moi. Oh. D'accord. Never throw soggy pretzels at a hippopotamus unless, of course, it's his birthday and he's tap dancing on a rubber horse. Quand vous voulez tout emporter. Pasadena 58, Paris 12. I don't know what that means either. Et soudain les yeux éperdus. And so Mickey Rooney rode into the sunset on a police dog. This song is not in French, it's in Italian. <laughs> Remembering all these little things. All of a sudden, my eyes
Several weeks ago, our choreographer, Tony Charmley, created a stunning dance to the music of the lovely French folk song, Frère Jacques. And it was so re uh, well received that we've decided to do something we've never really done before. We're going to repeat the number. And here, once again, are the Tony Charmley dancers and Frère Jacques. Ladies and gentlemen, this week has been, without a doubt, one of the most enjoyable weeks we've had ever since the show started. And, and there's a very good reason for that. The reason being that we have my very, very good friend George Burns with us. And you will find out, no matter what George is talking about, he's fun to listen to. Would you welcome, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. George Burns. You do? Thank you, Danny. I'd like to start off by talking about your nose. <laughs> you still think I'm fun to listen to? You know, th this is crazy because you th we could have gotten soupy sales and we decided to pick him. Well, I'll go get him. Good night, everybody. No, 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 no. Come back here and sit down, George. You're, you're not getting off that easy. Don't worry. I'd never get off that way. <laughs> if I had to make an exit, it yeah. would be a big one. Is it? Yeah. You, have, you, you got a big finish? Oh, yeah, I do splits. I kick the back of my head. <laughs> he scared me for I do a little paper tearing. Yeah? I got all kinds of finishes. Now I haven't got a finish. Comedians haven't got finishes. Yeah. You know, there's a whole different era, George. I, I don't know whether we'll ever see it again. Uh, I don't know, but I, I, I wasn't in, uh, in show business at the golden era when George was there because I think that was one of the most exciting era of show business in our lifetime, certainly. Uh, well, that's true. And the stories that George tells about those days, you know, I, um, 
No, he didn't precede me by much, I must say, but uh, that was a different era. I got in on the tail end of vaudeville. And um, I remember we, we did an act once, George, and I, and I was using a thick German accent. You know, oh. I was saying, all right, das haben Sie aber gehüben, das Gräube, die Hülsen. You get out from here or I will knock you the stairs down. <laughs> in the middle of the act, the manager came by, he called me off, and I couldn't understand it because I was getting very big laughs. And, you know, I thought we were a very big hit. And the manager came over to me and said, listen, you, you little Schweinhund, you. <laughs> is going to make trouble and make jokes from the way I speak, you are cancelled from here out. <laughs> that was the end of my whole, my, my whole career. I played the Dewey Theater. Yeah. That was on 14th Street. And I did an act, Brown and Williams, singers, dancers, and roller skaters. And my name was Brown. Oh. <laughs> and, uh, wait a minute. I must explain something. George must have done 140 acts and he had 140 I, different names. My name was Sammy Davis once. <laughs> Look, I was, I was, I was Jewish before he was too. <laughs> well, anyway, Brown and Williams. We played the Dewey Theater on 14th Street, yeah. and in those days they used to book eight acts. And if they didn't like you after the, not they didn't like you, they used to close four acts after the matinee. Yeah. So you do your act, and you'd stand downstairs outside of your dressing room. The manager would pass. He'd say, "You're closed. You're closed. You're closed. You're closed." And he passed us. He didn't close us. He closed some acrobats standing next to us. Mm -hmm. And this acrobat picked this little manager up by the seat of his pants. He says, who's closed? Pointed to me, he says, you. <laughs> Another time I did an act called Dunlap and Rosita. What was your name then? Dunlap. <laughs> and she was, she was. Why she was, weren't you Rosita? I tried. <laughs> I tried everything. <laughs> and anyway, it was Dunlap. And Rosita was a, was, a, was a very beautiful girl, yeah. but uh, she, she was beautiful, but she had, uh, she had bow legs. Really? Yeah, oh yeah, they were bad. And she always looked like somebody stole a cello. <laughs> and, and, uh, and, uh, and the girls, the girls in those days wore short skirts, but Rosita was very self-conscious about her legs, so she wore a long dress right down to the ground. <laughs> and we're playing the Myrtle Theater in Brooklyn. And she's on the stage dancing in this long dress, and I'm out there and looked at the audience, and the audience looked so confused. They knew that she was doing something under that dress, but they didn't know what. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's not, that's not why we were close. <laughs> I, bought, I bought a piece of scenery, a drop, yeah. that I hung up. And in those days, if you carried a piece of scenery, you got $25 a week more. I never saw the scenery. <laughs> And our opening number was, at the devil's ball, in the devil's hall. Anyway, Rosita and I on the stage were singing, at the devil's ball, in the devil's hall, they turned out the lights. The guy sold me the interior of a church. <laughs> we're in a church singing at the devil's ball, in the devil's hall. <laughs> now, wait a minute, I'm not through. Yeah, but I don't no, no, no. <laughs> Four months later, I came back to the same theater. Yeah. And I did a, a single. My name was Joey Sachs. Now, well, let me ask you something. Now, all, where did you happen to get the name Joey Sachs? No, I don't know. I ran out of names. I picked you. Let me tell you something. I'll tell you something else. My name was once Willie Delight. <laughs> there was a Willie Delight. Willie Delight. And he Delight. had cards printed. He had a thousand cards. And he stayed in show business a very short time, and he had about 900 cards left over. <laughs> <laughs> and he sold them to me, so I was Willie Delight. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, I came back to the Myrtle Theater, and my name was Joey Sachs, and I'm rehearsing the music in the, in the morning, and my opening song was, if you'll notice on the program where you mention all the acts, you take a look at number two, you see the name of Sachs. It doesn't say company or anything like that. It simply says, assisted by his little derby head, ooh, there is a little mystery what this little hat can do. It has a bit of history that I will tell to you. It doesn't sing or doesn't dance or anything like that. It simply says, assisted by his little derby head, ooh, and the manager came down the aisle. He says, hey, Sachs, are you Dunlap of Brazita and Dunlap that did, <laughs> that did at the devil's ball? And I says, yes, and he canceled me again before I even <laughs> Not only canceled me, but tore up my music and put his foot through my little derby hat. <laughs> oh. Now, all these stories are true. That's right. Well, well, most of them are Basically. truly true. No, now, let me tell this I now. Never, okay. 
Can I fix my sock, too? Yes. Was your sock? Well, I was always told to appear very neat, neat. in public, you see, so that then everybody will know that you're well-trained, nice My boy. skin is a <laughs> Good. <laughs> Phyllis Dilla sends her best. <laughs> George Burns tell stories, and all of them have a basis in truth. But a lot of them don't have any finishes. So there's where he makes up the finish, and he confesses. When George begins to tell you the end of his story, very confidentially, I know he's making up a lie. See? And one day, he and Jack Benny, I must tell you about Jack Benny and George Burns. They've been friends for what now, 35 years? 42 years. 42 years. That's a lie. <laughs> Jack Benny has to sit in a room, and George Burns says, Jay, he says, I'm going to do a funny bit. And before he does anything, Jack falls on the floor. I have never seen anybody absolutely reduced to such hysteria as when George, and he, he doesn't tell him jokes. It isn't the fact that he tells him a joke. It's some silly thing he does that nobody else laughs at. Jack Benny gets hysterical. I was sitting in a restaurant one day, and he's laughing. I'm sitting there eating. He's laughing. <laughs> so I go over to him. I said, what are you laughing at? I'm not doing anything funny. He says, yeah. He says, but you're doing it on purpose. <laughs> well, oh, I, I played golf with Jack one day, and we got through playing golf, and we came in, and we sat down. He said, what do you want to drink? And I said, uh, I'll have a pineapple soda. And Jack started to pound the table and got hysterical. I said, well, what, what are you laughing at, Jack? He said, I thought you were going to say it in an accent. <laughs> you know, he, he really predetermines things in his head, and, you know, whether you say anything funny or not, that's what he decides is going to be. You know, you remind me of something. He doesn't laugh at jokes, but Kirk Douglas told me a very funny joke at a party one night. It was real funny. So I went over, I told it to Jack. I said, Jack, this is a joke, and I know you don't laugh at jokes, but this is a funny joke. And I told it to him, and he laughed. He thought it was very funny. So I called over to Kirk Douglas. I says, Kirk, come here. Tell Jack the joke you just told me. So Kirk is now telling Jack the same joke I just told him. And Jack doesn't know what to do. He's looking at me like I got two heads. <laughs> and to be polite, he's smiling, and he's and finally at the finish, he laughs. I said, what are you laughing at? I just told you that joke. <laughs> Jack always gets himself involved, though, doesn't he? He always puts himself in the spot where Jack, George can do this. Jack starts everything himself. You see, all big things have happened to Jack, so they get to be unimportant. So the little things get to be important. Yeah. Like Jack will say to you, I just had the world's greatest glass of water. <laughs> It's a glass of water. And whatever he's going to say, last. Yeah, it's the greatest. Like he came out at the Hillcrest Country Club. He says, did you take a shower today? I says, no. He says, take one. He says, the towels are great. <laughs> so I went in. I used three towels and never danced with a girl again. <laughs> when I first met Jack, and Jack was a single getting about $300 a week, and he had the same timing that he's got now. You know, with the wrists and looking at the audience for tell, would tell a joke and look out there for two days. <laughs> so I said, I think I'll do that. So I'm booked into the Jefferson Theater. I go out, I tell a joke, and I look at the audience. But the trouble was, the audience looked back at me longer than I looked at them. <laughs> There's no finish. <laughs> oh, yes, there is. The manager came back, closed me, and kept the audience. <laughs> See, now, for Andy Williams, you'd have a big musical finish, wouldn't that's you? That's right, that's right. right. Now, you got a finish? Yeah. Huh? Well, let me see. If it's good enough for Andy Williams, it's good enough for me. All right. Can I, can I borrow your chorus? George, I, I, uh, I really don't like to bring this up in front of the audience, but if you remember, we, we had a little stipulation in the contract that if you sang on the show, you'd get $2,500 less. Can I borrow your chorus? <laughs> Come on out, kids. Come on, kids. Yeah. Well, I did it before. I'm going to sing that song. <laughs> now, uh, this is important to me. These are some of the songs I've made famous. George, can I, can I sing with you? 
I work alone. <laughs> well, can I sing in the chorus? Do I get back the $2,500? You get. You're in the chorus. <laughs> All right. Uh, Paul, a nice big introduction to Red Rose Rag. Down in the garden where the Red Rose Rag. <laughs> oh, my, I want to go. Pluck me like a flower. Trouble me an hour. Love me, let me learn that Red Rose Rag. Red leaves are falling in that rosy romance. Bees hum, come, now's your chance. Don't go hunting possum, mingle with the blossoms in the flowery, flowery dance. Oh, honey, that's all. That's plenty. I don't want anybody to steal these numbers. Now, <laughs> festival. There's going to be a festival this evening. A gathering of happy people there. There'll be noted individuals, a prominent distinctiveness to permeate the social atmosphere. Everyone who's anyone will be there. Joanna, my lovely fiance. There'll be grand ovation, special ostentation when the preacher gives the lovely bride away. Oh, 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 my God. That's all. That's all. That's all. <laughs> Society. This was arranged for me by John Philip Sousa's father. <laughs> hey there, honey. Ooh, we haven't got much money. Ooh, Our cupboard is almost bare. Ooh, Our clothes are old and funny. Say, now, nah, honey, Ooh, we don't need any money. Ooh, Tonight we haven't got a care. You and I, I that's, all, that's all, that's all, that's all. Now the war song. We rehearsed all this. Staccato. Say. Say. That's all. Oh, <laughs> uh, what, what? My key. What? Mark one. Mark one. Mark, mark one. Okay. Mark, mark one. Mark, mark one. one. No, no, no. Yeah. Oh, we all go down here? Yeah. That's right. Oh, I thought Mark we're one. We're going to get closer to the audience. If so I wasn't bored, well, I'd use that as a name. Yeah, and if mark we're a little one. bit longer. <laughs> and if we're a little bit shorter, I say Judy, Judy, Judy. Right. <laughs> all right. What is that? Ain't misbehaving all by myself, ain't misbehaving all happy on the shelf. Known to talk to, save my love for you. Saving my love for you. Pretty. I know for certain you're the one I love. I'm through with flirting, baby, it's you that I'm thinking of. Ain't misbehaving, saving all my love for you. Saving all my love for you. Jackie Horner in the corner, don't go nowhere, and I don't care. Don't care. Nice. Don't care. Don't care. All your kisses. Don't care. Don't care. All your kisses are worth waiting for, baby. Don't care. <laughs> All your kisses are worth waiting for, baby. Buddle dee doodle dee doo dee doo dee doo. Anytime you get a group of professionals, professionals, <laughs> that's like a, a votre plaisir, <laughs> who sit around and talk about show business stories like George does, it's, it, 
And really, that whole era gives me such a sense of nostalgia because uh, we're never going to see it again. The electronic medium and the movies and all. I remember when vaudeville used to be the only basic kind of entertainment that you could go to. And uh, you used to see acts and they'd go all around the country. And you became standard performers. <clears throat> and George used to do 130 acts, just like he talked about. It's just incredible. And before we came out to do the show, we were sitting in my dressing room. He must have done 30 songs. 30, just sitting around. Because he was always crazy about words. They always liked to kind of put them together. And at a party, at a party, George Burns is the most entertaining man in the whole world. I have never been to a party in all the years that I've lived out in California that George Burns came to that the party wasn't a success. It's happened every single time. You remember the night at my house when I came back from Vietnam? He was absolutely fabulous. And <clears throat> George was a... He always used to teach me the old songs that he knew, and I got to be really crazy about them. And he did one... <laughs> He taught me a song. I'll bet you that <clears throat> some of you may know, some of you may know the chorus, but I'll bet almost anything that none of you remember the verse. And this is a song that George taught me. All right? My kid brother was a lazy kid. One day's work is all the work that he did. He wrote a song, going strong. A hop and yonkers, it is going strong. Georgie Gordon and the other gang. I listened to the song that he sang. They said, cannot miss, it's bound to be a hit. How can it miss? How can it miss? When the chorus goes like this. Oh, Lily, Lily of the Valley. Lily, won't you be my pally? You're the sweetest little flower of the lot. Oh, be my lily, I said, be my lily, and I'll be your forgiveness. Oh, oh. The sweetest a little flower of the love. Oh, be my lily, I said, be my lily, won't you be my lily? Come on, be my lily, and I'll be your forget me I, I don't know what the weather has been like where you are during this past hour, but for us here, it's been, it's been a lovely night. The stars were shining, and I want to thank one of the great established stars in our business, Mr. George Burns, and a bright new star from France, Mireille Mathieu. And I also want to thank a few of the members of our own little Milky Way, Harvey Corman and Joyce Van Patten. Now, now, just before I leave, here's a news item that you may have missed. There is a professor called uh, uh, Charles McCann, and he's a, uh, he's a scientist and a horse breeder. And in the role of the scientist, he successfully crossed a thoroughbred racehorse with a centipede. No, no, that's true, and it's been running very well. But uh, last week it broke 33 of its legs, and they had to shoot a third of it. Good night. <laughs>